If you're tired of hand entering purchase orders into Sage 50, then you need to learn how to use their auto PO generation features. Um, there's kind of two scenarios where people want to create POs for them. One is just a general inventory replenishment, where you want to look at what you have on hand and uh, and create POs to bring it back up to your your normal stock levels. The other would be is if you want to have it create a PO for a specific transaction, like a dropship. So we'll look at both scenarios and what it takes to get them up and running. Uh, first, we're going to look at general inventory replenishment. Um, there's very little that you need to do as far as setup uh, to make this work. Obviously, you have to be using the inventory items. Um, but if you go into maintain default information, and then inventory items, there's a setting in here on the ordering tab. Um, include purchase orders when calculating quantity available. You want to uh, set this appropriately um, so you get the right quantities on, on your POs. If this box is checked, then the quantity available is calculated as quantity on hand uh, minus quantity on sales order plus the quantity on purchase order. If you clear this box, then your quantity available is just quantity on hand minus quantity on sales order. If you're using quantum, then you also have a, a second checkbox here to include work tickets when calculating quantity available. Um, and that will affect both um, the, uh, the finished good and the components. So if that box is checked, then the number of, of uh, items that you're building on a work ticket will be added to the quantity available for the finished good, but also the quantity of components being used will be subtracted from the quantity available for uh, for all the components. So just set those whichever way um, you know you want them for your calculations and then click OK to save your changes. And then the other thing that you'll probably benefit from doing but it's not a requirement is if you go to the maintain menu and go to inventory items then on each item you can set a minimum stock level um, a reorder quantity, so if you have to order a specific number at a time, um, then you put that in the reorder quantity. And then if you usually order it from the same vendor, you'll want to record a preferred vendor ID. Um, so once you've done those things, if you go to the task menu, you can choose select for purchase order. Now in here, you've got a lot of filters that you can set. Um, first, you can filter it. Uh, you can say you want all items or just a selected item. I don't know why you can't do a range of items. Um, you can do all item types or just a range of item types, that is if you're using types. And you can always also choose which um, items you want uh, to look at, whether it's just stock or assembly, non-stock, service, labor. Select whichever of those you need. And then you can also um, limit it by vendor ID if you want. That goes back to the, the uh, preferred vendor that we had just looked at. And if you use a buyer ID, you can also limit it by buyer. Then down in the bottom section, this is where it gets really important. Um, do you want to base this on the quantity available or the quantity on hand? And of course, as we mentioned before, you know, Quantity on hand is the actual, you know, quantity of sitting on the shelf right now. Quantity available will include sales orders and or purchase orders in the calculation. Then, do you want uh, do you want to look at just items that are out of stock, items that are below minimum, or things that are at or above minimum stock? And then to determine the um, the quantity, the suggested reorder quantity. This is the most common one, greater of reorder quantity uh, or the quantity needed to bring to minimum. But you also can always bring it up to minimum, always do the reorder quantity, or just do the quantity needed to fill uh, sales orders and accept proposals. And also the date back here is very important because um, this is the date that it's going to look at your inventory quantities. If you set that wrong, then you might not get um, the, the results that you want. So let's click OK. And um, up at the top here, you've got several options. And I'm going to go back to select. And I'm going to change this back to greater of reorder quantity, because that's what I want it to be set at. And so here you see the results of 
the criteria that you set. And you can change just about anything on here. You can unselect all or select all. You can individually unselect items that you don't want to order. You can come in and you can change the description if you wanted to. You could also change the quantity or even the unit price if you knew that your price had changed. Um, and you can click on any column heading to resort by that and click on it again to reverse the sort order. And down here I've got an example of one where we don't have any uh, uh, any default vendor, uh, preferred vendor set on that item. So before you can proceed, you'll have to fill in a vendor here because you can't have a purchase order with no vendor on it. Down at the bottom it shows us uh, the total dollar amount and the number of POs that it's going to generate. Um, once you're satisfied with that, uh, you can email your purchase orders, you could print them, you could also preview them, or you could print out a report of uh, what's on here. Um, the save button doesn't exactly save your work so it so you could come back to it. This would save all of the purchase orders that that you have listed here so then you could go back and edit or print them later through the normal purchase order window. I'm just going to close this since I don't really want to print all these POs. And so the other scenario that we talked about was when you wanted to create purchase orders or purchase orders to fill specific sales orders or, or invoices. Um, let's talk about how how that can happen. If we go to the maintain menu, back to default information and inventory items. And back on the ordering tab, you'll see we've got some choices down here at the bottom. Auto creation of purchase orders. The first one is enable auto creation of purchase orders for drop ship transactions. So if you enter a drop ship purchase order, or it could also be a drop ship invoice, um, as long as that's not an invoice that was converted from a uh, converted from a purchase order. And of course, there have to be transactions that are using item IDs. If you just went in and uh, typed in a quantity and a description, you know, that uh, it would not create a PO for that. You also have the option of creating purchase orders for non-dropship transactions. Uh, so again, that would be a sales order or a, an invoice that, um, you know, that was non-dropship. And same option again for work tickets. So I'm going to click OK there now that we've got those turned on. And um, using this method, having a preferred vendor set up on your inventory items is a requirement. Any any item that does not have a preferred vendor on it will be ignored uh, in this auto PO generation. And of course, the other requirement is that the person who's entering the sales order or invoice has to have rights to create purchase orders, or uh, or, or that will get skipped. So let's take a look at um, a drop ship sales order. So I'm going to create a new sales order. And we'll choose our customer. We'll set the date. And we'll put a couple of items on here. And we'll choose a birdhouse. and some bird seeds and you'll notice that on both of them we'll have more than enough on hand to uh, to fill this order but when we call it a drop ship and up here we can choose which address we want it uh, who we want it to be shipped to I'm going to save that I'm going to go back to this order and you'll see that the view related transactions link is already live on that even though all we've done is save the sales order if I click that, it's going to bring up a list of related transactions, and on it we see a purchase order. So if we double click that, here's the purchase order that's flagged as a drop ship straight to our customer with everything on it that, um, that was on our sales order. So if you've checked the box uh, to auto create 
uh, purchase orders for non-dropship transactions, then a similar thing would happen if you entered a, a, sale, a sales order, but it was not dropship. In order for that to trigger a, uh, a purchase order being generated, we would need to place enough, or our quantity would have to be high enough on a sales order to make the quantity available go below the minimum required stock um, for that particular item. Now in the case of non-dropship transactions, that would also be true for a sales invoice, as long as that invoice was not converted from a sales order. And it would even be true of a uh, receipt transaction if you were using um, if you're using item IDs on that receipt. And if you've turned on the option for work tickets, then creating a, a work ticket would have the same effect that if you needed more components than you had available, then the work ticket would, would generate purchase orders for those components. Now one thing to keep in mind that uh, in in all of these scenarios, the dropship, non-dropship, and work ticket, uh, it will not consolidate purchase orders for you. So if you enter one dropship sales order and it creates POs for it, then you go and create um, another you know, another uh, dropship sales order or a non-dropship that forces you below minimum stock levels. It's going to create a new purchase order. It's not going to go back, find the other one, and add to it. So that's the basics of uh, auto-creating purchase orders in Sage 50. Hope that will save you some typing in the future.